supercharged current affairs debate and electrifying opinion. Fake News with Mark Dolan on Talk Radio. Hello, how are you? As luck would have it, I'm Mark Dolan and this is Fake News, the uncensored topical quiz show that makes the House of Commons look like a serene oasis of calm. I'm delighted to say you can hear us on Talk Radio, but you can also see us on Facebook and YouTube. Please don't judge us too harshly. We're supposed to be on the radio. Another mad week in the world of showbiz and politics. William and Kate have launched the unveiling of EcoShip, the David Attenborough. Harry and Meghan would love to have done the unveiling, but unfortunately we're too busy fracking in Antarctica. Parliament has had a rough time this week since being recalled following a Supreme Court ruling. The atmosphere was more tense than a Meghan Markle family reunion. Boris Johnson was condemned this week for using the term humbug in relation to MPs' concerns about their personal safety. Well, here at Fake News, we don't take sides because we take the view every politician in every party is failing. All of them. Frankly, the sooner we have a benevolent dictatorship headed up by Julia Hartley Brewer, Mike Graham and Eamon Holmes, the better. First up, representing Team Humbug, we have talk radio icon Ash Gould, and alongside him, the professionally hilarious star of BBC Two's very funny MASH report, Steve N. Allen. Welcome, boys. Thank you. Representing the Dominic Cummings fan club, we have the highly opinionated and highly entertaining Andre Walker, top columnist, of course. Um, and next to Andre is the respected broadcaster, political journalist, and like Andre, regular talk radio presenter, and the only proper person on today's show, Daisy McAndrew. Great to have you all with us. Let's kick off with round one. Our next round is called Fake News, echoing the title of this very show. I will read some stories from the news this week and the panel must choose if they're true or false. So Ash and Steve, you're up first. Is this true or false? Hitler's wife's knickers sell for £3,700. That's right, a pair of pink silky knickers belonging to Adolf Hitler's uh, better half. I think that's always going <laughs> always gonna to be the case. Well, Ava Brown um, was sold at auction this week for, for nearly 4 k So what do we think, true or false? Well, I think they'd be quite rare because he got married in the bunker just before he was killed, so there'd probably only be one pair, and they'd definitely be soiled because they were about to get you know killed. Yeah. So they would be worth quite a bit, wouldn't they? Queen Victoria's knickers regularly come up for sale because apparently members of the royal family used to give away their clothing when they were finished with it. 52 inch waist, big girl. Wasn't big she? Girl. Yeah, and and girl. she ruled the whole of the world. So. Yeah, that's right. Well, she invented knickers. Apparently, women before Queen Victoria didn't wear knickers. Apparently. That's what I was just about yeah, to yeah. say. I didn't think yeah. she would have worn knickers, but she, she, must, she must have been. It uh, might have been those big frilly bloomer type ones. Yeah. I mean, I, they were, I they think were meant they were probably, to have it on her. They were knickers. I, I doubt they were G string <laughs> thongy type <laughs> affairs. Well. So, right if on. we're going to achieve the scale of the British Empire again post Brexit, we need an obese monarch, is what yeah. you're yeah. Well, she was also, she was relatively short as well, wasn't she? Like five foot one or two. So, she must have been basically. Spherical. She let herself go after Albert, didn't she? I mean, she didn't care. She just wore black. She didn't, you know what yeah. I mean? But uh, Hitler's pants would have been, uh, you know, deeper on one side because he only had one ball, didn't he? Yes. The others so in the, the Albert Hall. Uh, did, you get, did you get all of your facts from popular songs? Is yeah, that, yeah. That's <laughs> how well, uh, tell us, what do you think? True or false that these knickers have sold for nearly 4K? I mean, yeah, I, I lean towards true because, what was it three grand or something? Mm. For, Good value, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, mm. Britney Spears, they go for more than that and she's not been famous for ages. And that's exactly right. So, and look at, look at who she married. So yeah. I'd say, yeah. She had bad taste in men just like our Eva. Well, I can tell you the answer is true. Well done, guys. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, the nice pink one. silky knickers were sold to an anonymous telephone bidder this week who also bought her white lacy dress uh, that she wore at bedtime for £2,600. who was selling them? Who, who would have them in their drawer? Oh, look, um, here's a pair of Eva's knickers I've just found It was in my an drawer. anonymous uh, sale from someone called Dave Hitler. So. <laughs> <laughs> who knew? So, uh, Daisy and Andre, I've got one for you. Is this true or false? Uh, Scunthorpe woman finds dead fish inside tin of baked beans. That's right. Lisa Ford, allegedly, um, was opening the Asda own brand tin for her son when she made the stomach churning discovery. So what do you reckon? True or false? Well, I know that somebody once discovered a can of uh, beans with a mouse in and somebody discovered just the juice rather than any beans at all. <laughs> wow. Um, and I think it's because factories make different types of products 
including canned fish. So I bet it's true. But what kind of fish was it? A goldfish? No, or I think an it edible was fish. A, an edible fish. That's right. Event. Sardine anchovy type scenario. Pilchard. Could so have been a pilchard. It, was meant it might to be... have been um, a scallop. Yeah. It was meant to be one of those <laughs> beans that come with the little the little wieners in them. You know, those <laughs> yeah. that absolutely yeah, yeah. disgusting. I don't know why you're looking at me <laughs> yeah, when you say that, but the, thanks the, for the vote that of confidence. Is, that, that is the Alan Partridge savoury 99. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. when I he goes it, to Michael's house? Asda were outraged because they didn't normally have that much protein in their tinned goods. <laughs> so yeah. in many ways, it's bad it for was, the profit. It was oh, I'm, I, think, I think these products are made abroad where standards are not necessarily as high as they are in God bless it, the European Union. Is that a Brexit so argument? <laughs> I reckon that's true. Yeah. So once we've left Europe, there'll be no more dodgy bits of fish and beans. Be hey, look, look, once we leave no Europe, fish. once we leave Europe, we can go back to having sausages and burgers that have cow's anus in it. And I will <laughs> welcome those days. Right. <laughs> you'll just be post-Brexit, you'll be opening your mushy peas and there'll just be a chlorinated chicken wing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boom. It was all worth it. Um, so well, we think fishy you know. beans is true? Well, I can tell you that the answer is true. Oh. Yes, well done. Um, yes, Lisa Ford was gobsmacked when she saw an eye looking right back at her Ew. after opening the tin of beans. As to have apologised for the incident and given uh, Lisa's husband £5.23. Ash and Steve, true or false? Uh, woman dreams of swallowing engagement ring and wakes up to find she has swallowed her engagement ring. Jenna Evans allegedly fell asleep on a high-speed train and dreamt she was being mugged, so she swallowed the ring. I mean, it sounds like a cock and bull story, but is it true? It sounds true, really. I mean, if you think... I dreamt the other... Because I go out smoking three months ago, and I thought I'd had a fag, but actually I dreamt of having a fag. So that's good, isn't it? I mean, Yes, I this is very story, common. The story isn't telling you how drunk she was at the time, because no, I would yeah, say that was true. quite an important factor. Yeah, that's I right. I don't know if I'd think of doing this if I were being mugged to, to eat my valuables. But, but hang on, if she was drunk, she might believe that she did it in her sleep, but actually she was just rat-legged. Exactly. And did it, did yeah. it. Exactly. Well, sometimes <laughs> it makes real, because the other day I was, I was asleep and I was uh, imagining an old girlfriend, and I... I had talk radio on the background and it, it, this ex-girlfriend was talking like Mike Graham and then I realised <laughs> it was I had Mike Graham on and it, it, all, you sort of, why you left it blends I'll in. What, yeah, yeah. So what do we think? True or false? I'm leaning towards false on this one just because this thing of like if I dreamed I was being mugged I don't think I would no. eat my wallet and phone and <laughs> stuff. I don't know why that's your go-to thing. Would never, you would never I eat your ring. Well, I mean, I can't reach is the bigger problem. Um, <laughs> well, what do we think, true or false? I'm leaning false. What false, do you think? Yeah, we're false. OK, well, let's take a look. The answer is astonishingly true. Whoa. Yes, nice. uh, Gemma Evans from San Diego woke up to find the ring had gone. Doctors later located the ring in her intestines and it was recovered the following day. Wait a minute. Wow. That doesn't prove that she swallowed it. And on that anal note, <laughs> let's get to our next one. Daisy and Andre, is this true or false? Uh, celebrity chef sues Michelin Guide after being demoted for using cheddar. OK, so here we go. I can feel Andre's blood boiling as we speak. The French chef denies using cheddar cheese and claims the inspector uh, has an unsophisticated palate. Daisy, I think our problem with this is if somebody, if a French chef, chef had been demoted in the Michelin Guide for um, been falsely accused of using cheddar, he would probably sue. The question is whether that's ever happened with the Michelin Guide. I completely agree. That is exactly my thinking. Um, I think it's true. Let's go with true. Be true. All right, let's take a look. It is true. Well done, oh, guys. Yes. Absolutely. A celebrity chef in the French Alps is suing the Michelin Guide after his restaurant, La Maison des Bois, lost its three-star status for using cheddar cheese. They should have got an extra star. Ash and Steve, how about this one? Is it true or false? Tea bags release millions of plastic particles into your brew. According allegedly to research out this week from McGill University, your cup may contain contaminated plastic. So you're literally drinking liquid plastic. What do we think? True or false? I'm straight away. I'm leaning true. I'm true, thinking yeah. true. I do remember there was a news story about the amount of plastic that's found in human feces. Oh, right. Um, Depends who's it. What's, it? Going What's going on with and this how, show how today? How yes. <laughs> I, I didn't put the plastic there. It's very um, digestive. Um, I think our partnership with Anusol is probably influencing <laughs> the editorial the content of the show. <laughs> but it's, a, a lot of it, isn't it? Yeah. It's, micro, it's microplastics, which I think means you can use it as an exfoliant. Um, mm. I wouldn't recommend it, but give it a go if you, you know, if it's one of those, again, a life hack. Like, can't it scrapes actual... you from the inside as well, the tea bag sort of thing. What, yeah. are you saying yeah. that you can use your who as an exfoliator? 
I'm not saying I'm not saying I do. <laughs> but he's got very good. Complexion. Some people do. If you're on a desert Strong island, way. what you're going to do? Have rough skin. Well, I, <laughs> um, I mean, it's interesting because I know Andre, for example, you challenged some of the uh, received wisdom on global warming and other environmental stuff. So what about the plastic thing? You you might think go the other way and go a bit of plastic not going to do you any harm. Honestly, why not have a little bit of plastic? Look, you know you need to enrich your diet, and I, you know I just I genuinely think it's fiber. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's, it's, it's a great fiber provider. It is. Mm. It is. The uh, the problem you've got is that the moment you get more environmentally friendly, the, the product is somehow less effective. So mm. Yorkshire Tea got in big trouble because they removed the plastic from their bags and then the bags were breaking and everyone was up in arms. Oh. And everyone was like, hashtag bring back the plastic. Mm. The, and my rule is, you know, I'm against single use plastic. So all you have to do is use it twice, which I see for a tea bag is problematic. But, <laughs> you know, you can get a second cup oh, out I of it, can't I you? Don't, no, I always use my tea bags twice. Really? Yeah, mind you, I like weak tea. Yes. No, that's an interesting fact on a no, Saturday. That's unusual for a northerner to have weak tea. <laughs> yes, and the other reason you use a tea bag twice is because you're a talk radio presenter, so yeah, when needs afford. must. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're more or less only here for the shelter, aren't you? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, now, uh, what can you tell me, true or false, guys? Yeah, I'm gonna, it's going to be true. I mean, I've not, true. I've not checked my own innards, but I'm, I think true. Well, I'm delighted to say it is true. Um, yeah. Apparently, 96% of tea bags contain uh, polypropylene, which is used to seal them. McGill University found that a single plastic tea bag releases 11 billion microplastic particles into the water. Daisy and Andre, is this one true or false? Uh, solving her transport dilemma, Greta Thunberg is now going to walk and swim home from New York to Sweden. <laughs> Apparently Barack Obama has uh, called her latest effort against uh, climate change inspiring. But is it true or false? Is she going to walk well, home? Well, firstly, you could do it, I think, couldn't you? But you'd have to go the other way via Alaska and you'd have to put on some very warm wetsuits. But she can't possibly be doing it. I am dubious about this one because I don't think that Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, how we pronounce it, mm. does anything without it getting through to us. She gets so much publicity mm, that I right. think I would know if she was going to I, think I don't particularly want to know saying. her every move, but I feel I do know her plus, every move. Plus, also, why would you swim if you've got a four million pound yacht. Very true. And Prince Harry's been bigging her up this week, hasn't he? Well, from his right. from yes, Elton sir. John's private jet, getting <laughs> yeah. on the phone going, I'm exactly. very worried about climate change. Exactly. Um, pass the champagne. Well, Elton does say he offsets the carbon by planting, I mean, I'm guessing flowers. But if you, <laughs> if you look at how many flowers have been grown for him, he has reduced carbon on this planet. That is probably In right, fact, actually. Yeah, quite a few things have been grown for Elton over the years, if you watch the movie Rocket Man. But look, <laughs> here is the truth. I mean, um, the woman is, she is a young woman now. She's trying to do her bit for the environment. And uh, people are questioning whether or not you could actually physically walk from New York to Sweden. Are we saying that in principle you could walk it? Well, you could, because I think that, that isn't there a bit of the United States of America which is sort of 20 miles from Russia? Right. The, on the other way around, yes. when it's Alaska or whatever. Easier, now, I don't know. I don't know how long you'd last swimming that twenty miles, but certainly you could. You could see swim twenty miles. Catapulted. People do it. Yeah. Um, there you go. Well, what do we think? True or false? I think we think false. I think we do think false. Well, I'm going to say you are right. It was yes. false. Um, it's not true at all. Greta will not be swimming home from New York. She'll be flying back on Concord with Meghan and Harry. <laughs> well, that round was so badly done, the Supreme Court are having a look at it. <laughs> Gina Miller is on the case. Um, it means the scores are as follows. Team Humbug are now on 250 and the Dominic Cummings fan club have dropped to seven. Oh. Yes. Ouch. Uh, it's time for a short break. We'll be back with more big laughs and public anger after this. Supercharged current affairs debate and electrifying opinion. Fake news with Mark Dolan on Talk Radio. Hello and welcome back to Fake News, the comedy quiz show equivalent of a dodgy plumber needlessly replacing your boiler. Yes, I'm Mark Dolan and still undermining the Constitution are Ash Gould, Steve N. Allen, Daisy McAndrew and Andre Walker. Now, don't forget, you can hear us on Talk Radio, but you can also watch us on Facebook and YouTube, which is why the team have done this to my hair. I'm telling you now, it's not comfortable. OK, our next round is Headline Deadline. Here are some headlines from the news this week. All you have to do is guess the missing word. It's a buzz around, so fingers on buzzers, let's go. Here's your first headline. Labour pledges Britain will be what by 2030? 
Andre. Less racist. Hopefully. <laughs> Good luck with that. Daisy. Screwed. Screwed. Yeah, I think it's already happened, hasn't it? No longer part of the EU. Ooh, that's a bit optimistic. Are you drunk? <laughs> yeah, probably. What have they put in his tea? Microplastics. <laughs> Plastics. Uh, bankrupted by us. OK, well, let's find out the answer. Carbon neutral. Britain will be carbon neutral by uh, 2030. There'll just be no houses or people. So, <laughs> yes, the Labour Party promised to eliminate net emissions by 2030 if they get into power by taking control of large energy firms, building railways and increasing taxes on the rich. OK, next up, Democrats launch what probe into Trump? Anal. <laughs> Is the right answer. <laughs> I wish. In a parallel universe. Any other suggestions? Is it a Ford. Uh, Democrats launch a Ford probe. Well, that would be bigger. Oh. Constructive, oh. wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it's not the job. right answer. In fact, I can tell you the answer is impeachment. That's right. Democrats launch impeachment probe into Trump. Is it going to work, by the way? Is this guy about to cease to be president of the United no. States? No, no, no. I no. remember, geek fact, impeach means indict. So basically, it's the Congress saying, should it go to trial in the Senate? That is an impeachment. So he will be impeached, but he will not be found guilty by the Senate. If the people who voted for Trump feel like he's been taken away from them by a Washington elite, then they'll just try to find the next person who could be Trump, and that could be Stephen but also, Seagal. But if some, yeah, exactly. but well, if, there'll be a civil war, won't there, with all the assault pres, rifles? If an American president is removed from office, my understanding is that doesn't prevent them from just running so in the next again. election. Unless yes. they're in prison. Yes. Yes. But he could probably manage it from prison. Yeah, he probably could. I could see that campaign <laughs> work, behind work, bars. Work for Bobby work, Sands. It would work did, brilliantly. It? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. More good news. Uh, Donald Trump is here to stay. Yes, Donald Trump tweeted this week that the impeachment inquiry launched against him was presidential harassment. This, of course, is a scandal uh, that broke after his controversial call with the president of Ukraine. Next up, German court says hangovers are what? Steve. Just appropriate. <laughs> the amount of drinking they do. It's yeah. a good punishment for enjoying yourself, basically. <laughs> Inevitable for alcoholics. Mm. I've always thought it's the I've always thought it's the alcoholics that don't get as, the hangovers. As, as a functioning one. <laughs> You, not me. No, I've always the other way around. Me, I think you. that the, the, it's the professional drinkers that are the ones who never have any ill effects. Get, that away, are the ones... get away with it. Yeah. Can I buzz? Please. I think it's a sickness. You think it's a sickness? German court says hangovers are a sickness. Well, I'm going to give you that, an illness. Oh, well done, Daisy. Well done. Yes, indeed. Let me elaborate. German court says hangovers are uh, an illness. This week, a German court has ruled that hangovers are an illness in a judgment against the maker of hangover cures. So there you go. So funnily enough, I was quite interested in this story, which is the reason, because they've said that you can legitimately take time off work if, you, if you've got a hangover. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's it's not working against it's so un-Germanic, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> if you were to do that here, there would be no talk radio. Yeah. But there's a cure here. It's a talk sport. They just don't stop drinking. Drinking. And you can hear Alan Brazil every morning. <laughs> exactly. We're all thinking it. Nice one, Chuck. Thank you, darling. OK, next headline. UK faces a shortage of 50,000 what? Fruit pickers. We've fruit got, no, no pickers. one wants to pick fruit. We, we, we're above that here and we, the fruit's oh, going like, to just like wither a, on the... Do you I like, like it? a bit of strawberry picking in the summer. I mean, admittedly, it's not an employment oh, thing, There we but, go. But I, I quite enjoy it. I think your own is not quite the yeah, same no, as an eight-hour shift. But yeah, it? that's right. But, and also, with the place I used to go, they used to weigh you on the way in and weigh you on the way out when yeah, you were kids. Yeah. Oh, so that's, <laughs> that's offensive. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> well, actually, yeah. the, the level of theft that took place no. was, was relatively significant. It's like going to Weight Watchers. The risk of making this a toilet segment again all you need to do is eat lots of strawberries and drop out some plastic, as we call it these days, and yeah. you would have levelled off your maths. Well, look, but, but then again, that would be a benefit to the farmer because it would be fertiliser. Yeah. It's a win -win. Everyone's a winner. Of course they are. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'll have to hurry you for an answer. What do we think? Nurses? Nurses. Actually, public sector workers, as a clue, not nurses, but... Teachers. Is the right answer. Well yeah. done. Next up, we have Tory conference will be what? Not very good <laughs> as a result of as a result of having nobody there to drink the warm Matthias Rosé and eat the prawn cocktail crisps. Well, yes, because the problem is that Parliament rejected the Conservatives um, uh, vote to they, actually they, they, break Parliament up they so they could have their. They so it's got to be either not very good or is going ahead or something like that. Do you think Parliament were being a little petty by stopping the Tories having their conference? Yeah. Yes, of course they were. Yeah. But I don't blame them for being petty because no. everybody is being pathetic. Um, would it have moment. happened pre-Humbug, pre the Humbug Gate? 
Possibly not. No. Po possibly Things not. have got that bad. Yeah. That and there now... is such a, you know, tit for tat and screw you. Will attitude. it get to the point where when a backbencher needs a we, you'll have to ask like a Liberal Democrat and some else unionists to, yeah, to pair but, but, while I go to the loo? Somebody told me that that happened years ago at Berkshire County Council when Steve Norris, who later went on to be Transport Secretary, mm. went for a wee at two in the morning and the Conservative budget failed because they didn't have enough votes. <laughs> 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 Apparently they just kept the debate going for as long as possible until a Tory went for a wee and then they decided to call the vote. OK, well, I'll reveal the answer. The Tory conference will be positive and uplifting. Mm. Said a very drunk person. Um, <laughs> no, the uh, International Development Secretary, uh, Alok Sharma, has insisted the Tory party conference uh, will be positive and uplifting despite MPs voting to reject a three day Commons recess to let them do it. Uh, next up, Brits think they're better than the government at what? Everything. Yes. There is, Everything. I mean, politicians are now all persona yeah, non grata, I mean, aren't they? I mean, look, look, I think I've got, I've got a two-year-old nephew who would run the government better than the current shower. Yeah. I mean, you know, fill the House of Commons with children, they'd do a better job. Steve, it's a really interesting question. MASH Report deals with politics fantastically well. Um, you. Do you guys worry that the more you lampoon politicians, the more rather, one is rather undermining democracy. Is it a dilemma for a young man like yourself? The, no, well, it, no, you need to be raising the issues and pointing out how stupid things are. I think we're living in a time when, when you highlight the hypocrisy, it doesn't matter because no one cares about the hypocrisy anymore. Everyone's mm. all focused on the ends. So when you say, look at these terrible means, they go, I don't even see any means. It's, make the ends happen, make the <laughs> ends happen. Everyone's obsessed about yeah, those ends. So it doesn't so make true. a difference. And actually, they started it. So and don't, in some don't ways, blame do, you, the do you see the, the B word, <laughs> almost the B word? Word is like it's it's actually there it's no more politics has sort of gone now it's just you're a Brexiteer or you're a Remainer everything else yeah. is yeah. just a movable feast isn't it 69% of Leave voters now don't trust their MP at all so this isn't trusting them to do Brexit which I don't think no. any any of us this is trusting them to sort out a pothole to do absolutely mm. anything and it's gone up about and it's gone up for leave, Leavers is now I think 53% so it's not far behind I mean sorry Remainers bit back 53% so not far behind so nobody trusts politicians at all and when they compared it to just a few months ago it has changed significantly by about 20 20%. Yeah. So, you know, our view of politicians as being people who are trustworthy on anything at all or capable of doing anything at all wow. is completely plummeted. And that is a problem because I can't see it being reversed It's a problem, soon. but it's not a big shock, is it? <laughs> it's not a big shock, but what, you know, how do you get around that? Maybe. Because we have to have MPs and we yeah. want to have good ones. Well, maybe so, before they do it, the, M the, the prospective MP should take all the constituencies, uh, the people down the brewery and see if they can get them all drunk and have a good party down there. You know well, what I mean? can't organise that. Yeah, yeah they can't yeah. just sort yeah. that out. You seem to have we relegated politicians to the status of estate agents, lawyers and talk radio presenters <laughs> for sheer <laughs> levels of public contempt. Well, let's have a look at the answer. It is... Cyber security, right? So the headline reads, uh, Brits think they're better than the government at cyber security. Well, we do have the technology. Our smartphones yeah. are amazing devices, aren't I'll they? I'll tell you what, I've got the best phone in the world. The photos are brilliant. And because it's made by Huawei, it's all backed up in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> so, superb. Nicely done. Uh, yes, new findings out this week reveal that Brits trust themselves more than the government to keep themselves safe online. Our next headline, half of UK drivers don't know how to what? Steve. Indicate if they drive a BMW. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Why do they even wire those things up? I do, you know, I've never bought one of those particular types of cars or an Audi, but do they send you a pamphlet on how to be a massive tool? There is something about BMW drivers. I yeah. think mini drivers as well. Maybe yeah. Volvo Mercedes drivers. Mercedes drivers. Really? They're terrible. They'll I've just always... drive at you. Is that they right? drive, I have to jump out of the way at least a couple of times. Are you sure it's not a Mercedes driver that just knows you? That hates me and waiting for me. It's, it's the same number plate. Yeah, it is the, it's the same number plate. OK, well, any other suggestions? Half of UK drivers don't know how to accept the results of the Brexit referendum. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, I admit it's not related to driving, but that is also true. Yes, well, you brought several stories together there. Let's see if you're right. The answer is the missing word is change attire. Oh. Time's up, and with that assault on democracy, here are the final scores. Losing their deposit, it's Team Humbug with 317. Not again. Very disappointing. Oh. And being swept to power on no mandate at all, how ironic, it's the Dominic Cummings Fan Yay! Club. 1,500 <laughs> points, and today's special prize is a copy of David Cameron's enjoyable autobiography for the record. Knock yourselves out, guys. That's your really weekend sorted. Team, Absolutely. Many thanks to all of my extraordinarily brilliant guests who have tested the word entertainment to its very limits. Before we go, let's take a look at next week's news.
Here's an exclusive look at next week's news headlines. Joe Swinson says, I'll cancel Brexit and Mrs. Brown's boys because it's not funny. Labour pledge, we will make owning your own shoes a punishable offence. BBC funding crisis, we may have to sell Hugh Edwards. And finally, Boris Johnson will say something unplanned, off the cuff and a bit controversial. Everyone will get very upset and we'll be no closer to delivering Brexit. See you next week when at least some of those things will probably be true. I've been Mark Dolan. Goodbye.